Okay, so today we're going to do a quick demonstration of an Asus Tinkerboard running RetroPie, and here we have a little mini Nintendo 64 case. I'll leave a link in the description to uh, where you can download it and get one of your own. So this is an Asus Tinkerboard. It's pretty much exactly the same physical dimensions of a Raspberry Pi. You got your four USB inputs and your Ethernet along with your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. HDMI and a micro USB and your micro SD card slot at the bottom here. So we use a Asus Tinkerboard because it has a, a little bit better of a GPU and uh, the only downside is it just costs a little bit more. The Raspberry Pi is about $35 and this version of the Asus Tinkerboard is about $65. So let's get into the setup here. So for our setup, what we have is uh, we got a speaker that we're going to use. We're going to use an external speaker instead of using the audio through the HDMI because on this unit, the uh, HDMI audio output is a little hit or miss. So we're just going to be using a regular Bluetooth speaker with a uh, headphone jack right here in the back. And we also have a uh, keyboard connected. We're going to use the keyboard to log into the system. Uh, you can use any any USB keyboard really. There's a lot of really small handheld ones that I like on Amazon, but we got this one here. I think I got it at Walmart for like ten bucks. And here we have a N64 style USB controller. So this system can run up to four different controllers once you get it going. Um, you can play four person Mario Kart, anything like that. Uh, it supports pretty much any USB controller, so PlayStation, Xbox ones, you just need the drivers for it. Um, there's a Logitech F310, which I like, that's a pretty good one, but if you're just looking to play N64 games, this is pretty good, but if you're looking to play, um, you know, any other system, I would just go with the Logitech F310. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, and also another important thing for the power brick you want to get a large one something like this something that you would use to charge a tablet uh, Has to be at least a two and a half amp output. The system is overclocked and uh, it does require a little bit of power to run Properly, so let's get into some games So once you boot the system, it'll show this login screen. We're just gonna log in here And we're going to launch Emulation Station. We have multiple systems here. Asus Tinkerboard is capable of playing uh, quite a lot more than what's shown here, but uh, we're just going to show N64. And um, if you ever wanted to change your settings as a settings menu. The most important one would be configuring your input. Um, if you're changing controllers or if you bought a new controller from this menu you would go through and um, change your settings here. I'll just do a quick quick demo of that. So it says do you want to configure your input? You go to yes. This is one gamepad. You just hold down any button. From there you just press the buttons up, down, left, right on the d-pad, start. For select I use the Z trigger on the bottom. Uh, a and B and uh, since we don't have an X to skip over it what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold down one that we already did one that we already mapped and it'll just move past it so we'll do left right we're gonna skip this one skip that one skip skip up down left right and then for the analog this is gonna be our C buttons the yellow C buttons here. And for the hot key, this is a button that we're going to need to back out a game, so I'm going to just use the same button that I mapped the select to, which would be the, the Z trigger on the bottom here. So I'll hit OK. It'll take a couple seconds. The computer is writing the, the config file, and it looks like it's not doing anything, but it's actually generating the, the buttons we mapped. So we just got to wait. We press start. We'll just wait till this screen goes away and then we'll be ready to play. So we'll go back out of here and also shutting down the system instead of just uh, yanking the cable out. Uh, it's good to just go through here and quit through this menu instead of um, instead of just pulling the cord out because that could corrupt your SD card. So we'll do that. Let's go into some games. 
check out uh, Super Smash Brothers. So you'll notice right away in the in the audio and the gameplay that this is much smoother than using a regular Raspberry Pi. Gameplay is a lot smoother on a tinkerboard. So once you're done with the game, to back out, we're gonna press start and select. So pressing start and select will back us out of a game, and then we can choose a different one here. And go to Goldeneye. Oops. Oop, that's Golden Nugget. We want Golden Eye. I'm not sure what Golden Nugget is. So if you've used RetroPie before, you'll know that GoldenEye is a real, the real test here for emulation. You can already tell it's a lot smoother. Not really any lag. Pretty good frame rate. Not really any stuttering and the audio is keeping up rather well. Right, so we're gonna back out of this game. And that's all there is to it. Um, I think this whole system cost roughly maybe anywhere from $160, $180, um, but it's a lot cheaper than buying an actual N64. All you need is, you know, just a speaker set up, and you can use anything, anything really. Um, and it can support up to four players, and other than that, that should do it. If you have any questions, feel free to post a comment. All right.